I'll be perfectly honest with you, I'm not a professional colorist, and if you're watching this video, you're probably not either. But that doesn't mean our videos need to look like crap. Today, I'm going to show you the steps I take and the tools I use to color correct my videos to make them go from this to this. Let's jump into Final Cut Pro and get started. First thing we need to do is set up our space for color correction. The easiest way is to use Final Cut Pro's built-in color and effects workspace. To switch to this workspace, go up to the menu bar and select Window, Workspace, and Color and Effect, or use the keyboard shortcut Shift Control 2. This closes your media browser and opens up video scopes, which can be very helpful when color correcting. By default, you get four scopes in this window, all of which are fairly small. What I prefer is instead of four small scopes, I like to have one large one. Open the view drop down menu and select the one scope view. To select which video scope you see in this window, click on the scope icon right under the view drop down and select the video scope you want to see. Let's switch to the Luma scope. We don't need to see the effects browser for this, so let's close it and adjust the window sizes to make our viewer window nice and big. To save this setup as a custom workspace, go back up to the menu bar. Select Window, Workspaces, and Save Workspace As. Give it a name and click the Save button. Let's press Command-0 to go back to the default workspace. Now, when it's time to color correct your project, you can just go to your workspaces and select your custom workspace. I'd also recommend switching your default color tools to color wheels. Press Command-0 to open the Final Cut Pro Settings window, and in the General tab, change the default color correction tools to color wheels. They're just better. We're now ready to color correct our clip. The first thing I always like to do is adjust the exposure in my clips. I'm always amazed at how much better this can make my videos look. To help with this, we'll use our Luma scopes. Basically, the waveforms we see here is the brightness values in our clip. Zero represents complete black, and 100 is pure white. Go to your color inspector, and first, let's bring down the shadows until the traces in your waveform come close to touching zero. Grab the exposure handle of your shadows control, and slowly drag it down while watching the waveform. You don't want to go below zero because you'll lose all the detail in your shot just close. Do the same with your highlights. Grab the exposure handle in your highlights control and drag it up until the traces in your waveform are getting close to 100. Adjust the exposure of your midtones depending on how your shot looks. In my example, I'll bring mine up just a little bit. After adjusting your midtones, you might have to go back and tweak your shadows and highlights. Next up is color saturation, and this is one adjustment where you have to rely on your eyes. You can't really use a scope to help you out here. For this shot, let's start by bringing up the overall saturation, and maybe a bit extra for the mid-tones. Try not to overdo it here, just give it enough color so it looks good. For our next step, let's check, and if necessary, fix the white balance of our shot so our whites are true white. To help with this, switch to the RGB Parade waveform, and find a part in your shot that should be either white or a neutral gray. Use the crop tool and crop your image until a white or gray part takes up most of the frame. Your three waveforms should all roughly be the same height. In our example, our image is leaning quite a bit towards blue, so grab the global color pack and drag it over towards the red until the waveforms are roughly the same. Next, if you have people in your shot, you need to adjust the skin tones. It doesn't matter if the rest of your image has perfect color. If your skin tones are off, people will notice. Luckily, Final Cut Pro has a perfect scope for adjusting skin tones, the vector scope. Go back to your scopes window, switch to the vector scope, and use the crop tool to isolate your subject's skin. Over in your vector scope, you should see a line going up to around 11 o'clock. If you don't see it, click on the scopes icon and select show skin tone indicator. This is the skin tone line, and your traces in the vector scope should fall on this line for correct skin tones. If yours are off like mine, grab the mid-tones control puck and adjust it until the vector scope traces fall on the line. And this works on all shades and colors of skin. Reset your crop tool to see the entire image again. Here's our clip before, and the same clip after applying some basic color correction. The colors might not be perfect, but it does look a lot better, doesn't it? Now, if you want to go beyond simple color correction and learn how to color correct and color grade like a pro colorist, my friend Dylan John has recently released the Final Cut Pro Color Grading Masterclass. This complete course takes an in-depth look at color tools available in Final Cut Pro, color theory, color correction, secondary color grading to achieve specific looks, and so much more. I'm only in lesson 9 of the over 85 lessons included, but I can already tell Dylan knows what he's talking about. 
after I complete the course, I'll probably have to delete this video because it's complete crap. Until then, this is what works for me, and hopefully this helps you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.